Welcome to lesson 7.3. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the effects of something called an outlier on the averages that we would normally talk about as being the mean, median, and the mode. So when something happens which is really different, you have to ask yourself, should that be included in an average? For example, I'll give you an extreme example, okay? Let's say that you're measuring how long it takes you to walk to school. And on average, it takes you about 15 minutes to walk to school. But one day, because of an injury or a delay or because of something happens, rather than taking 15 minutes, it took you three hours before you got to school. Now, the question is, does that really count? That will be known as an outlier. And you have to look at how it is, um, effect, what effect it has on the numbers you're using as well as does it truly represent a possible um, situation that should be included, all right? Uh, for example, do you include three hours? My, my, you know, my, my opinion in that situation would be this is not a typical day, so therefore it would not be included, and that's called an outlier. So when you're calculating the average of a data set, you have to be careful about what's included. Let's take a look at the data set I've got here. I've got 22, 23, 43, 55, 55, 100, and 53. Okay, so this is just a, a simple set of data of some test marks. So let's calculate the mean, the median, and the mode just so that you have some numbers to work with and then we'll talk about the outliers. So I'm going to pause the recording and I'd like you to go through and calculate these three uh, information, this, these three pieces of data. Okay, so our first off we have our mean, median, and mode. So we're going to start with the mean. The mean is the sum of the number of entries. All right, so basically the mean is going to be equal to the sum. So I've got uh, 24 plus 22 plus 43 plus 55 plus 55 plus 100 plus 53. And that's all divided by seven numbers. So my mean is going to be 352 over 7. So my mean is equal to 50%. So there we go. That's what you should have gotten. Now the median is when they're in order. Now I just kind of put them in order here. So your numbers would be 22, 24, 43, 53, 55, 55, and 100. So the middle mark, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 marks. That's 3 on this side, 3 on that side. So there's my middle. My median is 53. Now, this is a percent, so we have to keep our percent sign in there. Now, let's take a look at the, the numbers for the mode, okay? Um, I didn't go back here. I guess the mode's down here. Uh, the mode is not 53. I kind of wrote that down wrong. The median is 53%. And, of course, the mode is the number that occurs most often. That's 55. So let's just list these things out. So the three numbers that I have. Notes are the mean is 50, the mo the median is 55, and the the mode is oh sorry there we go I got them I got them in the right order even though I said that wrong. Okay so there's my three numbers. On the surface this looks like a poor test but not terrible. But what happens if you take out the 55? That's right you just take out the 100. So now what I want you to do is I want you to remove the the 100 percent. And then I want you to recalculate the data here. So pause the recording and recalculate everything, but don't include the 100 this time. So pause the recording. Okay, so I'm going to shorten things up. The sum is going to be 252. That's over 6. That gives me 42%. All right. The median is the two middle numbers this time, so I have to take in. They're already in order for me, so um, I've got... 22, 24, 43, 53, 55, and 55. My two middle numbers are now here and here, so I've got to find the average of 43 and 53. So 43 plus 53, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to divide that by 2. That gives me 48 is my answer. The mode is, is still 50, it's still 55. Okay? But look what happens to the mean when I dropped out that one 100%. The average went from 
all the way down to 42 percent. Okay, that's a that's a pretty big drop, almost almost 10 percent. Okay. Okay. The median dropped five percent. Now, if there had been two 100s, well, would you have included them? Well, that's a good question. I mean, look at the numbers. There are 22, 24. Is a 100 percent uh, by itself, is it an outlier? Is it uncharacteristic of this person? Is two 100 percent? Well, the more 100s you add, the more chance that it's okay. And this is where it gets to be somewhat of a judgment call to a certain point. One 100 could be considered to be an outlier. It's not considered an average normal mark for this person. And you, you judge that by what this person's already got. And you see that he has failed on three of his tests, his highest mark being 55%. 100 is 45% higher than normal. So that would be considered to be an outlier. So you wouldn't normally include it. So these, these are called outliers, and they influence the average in a way that causes it to misrepresent or to lie about the true data or the true averages. Let's look at an extreme example. Here we go. Remember our temperature question in Edmonton? What if the temperature data were the following? 13, 14, 16, 16, and then 16, 17, 1,617. Note that the absence of the comma is on purpose. In the recording of the data, the person recording forgot to place the comma between the 16 and the 17 on the data. Okay? This is an example of an error. Now, if this was put into a computer system, remember the computer does not know whether it's an error or not. It's going to use 1,617. Now, if you take a look and try to calculate the mean here, and you can use your calculator, and I'll help you out here. It's actually 335.2 degrees. Now, we know that's not possible. Water boils at 100, 100 degrees Celsius, so it's not going to be three times the temperature of water boiling. So that means that 16, the 1,617 number here, there's a problem with it. I, I told you this was an extreme example. We would not use it. Or you'd put the comma in and use the 16 and 17. Okay, but it's suspect, and you'd have to take a look at it to figure out whether or not you want to include it. Now, most people will identify that there's a problem from the result of this mean, 335 degrees. However, it means that unless the people doing the calculating can find the reason for this outlier, they can't find why that's 1,617, the average of the temperatures in Edmonton is really a useless number. You can't walk up to somebody and say, in March last year, it was 335 degrees on average that week. It's not possible. Okay? A mean temperature of 335 degrees, 0.2, is simply just not possible. Identifying the outliers is the choice of the person doing the calculation. However, whether to include or not include that outlier itself is, is going to depend on the effect. that outlier has, and whether or not the outlier is a possibility. My alignment's going on my smart board. Okay, so let's take a look at a fishing derby here. I've got 1.3 fish, 1.3, 0.5, 1.1, 8 kilograms, 2.5, and 3.4. The question is, is there an outlier in this data here? Taking a look at that. Well, you could say it's possible that 8 kilograms, because 8 kilograms is significantly larger than the other numbers. I've got a, a 0 0.5, a 1.1, a 1.3, a 2.5, and a 3.4. You could be saying, well, no, you know, type 8's way, way out. It's not possible. Okay? But the problem is, is 8 kilograms possible when you're in, the, in, that, in that fishing derby? Okay? So... And this depends on whether an 8-kilogram fish is possible.
if you're in a fishing derby and you're at a, a like some sort of a fair and they've just put a whole bunch of fish in a tank and you know there's no eight kilogram fish in there then somebody made a measurement error because there was no eight kilogram fish to go if you're using uh, a specific type of a fish and you know that they don't grow to be eight kilograms like perch you wouldn't find an eight kilogram perch it's just it's almost impossible so that would also become a problem however what if you were working with salmon now you can get an eight kilogram salmon I mean that's that's not an un unheard of event at all so if someone's on a fishing derby and they catch an eight kilogram salmon then it would not be an outlier so if it's possible then you would include it okay or if it's uncharacteristic you would not include it but aiding getting an eight kilogram salmon fish in a fishing derby that's not that's not a problem okay let's take a look at running kilograms that you run let's say you're in training you're trying to train for the marathon and during this training you have every day you record how far you run you got 23 kilometers 14 kilometers 25 32 42 and 1.2 no this is not a mistake it is 1.2 kilometers okay is there an outlier there well, you should have identified that the outlier is 1.2 kilometers. Now, taking a look at 23, 14, 25, 32, and 42, is 1.2 possible? Yes, you fall down, you break your leg, or you fall down, slip, or, or something happens, there's an emergency, and you've got to leave. Is it possible? Yes. So it does fall within the realm of possibility, but is it a characteristically similar number to what you would normally get right? if it's close like so I was saying if you're like 9 I'd probably include it still because 9 is close to 14 if it was um, 50 that's close to here right but 1.2 is significantly different than any of those numbers so it should not be included Okay, the word for that is excluded. Okay, hours studied by a student for a test. So let's take a look. I get 1.2 hours, 2.3, 4.6, 2.1, 0 0.4, and 18 hours. Okay, so what is the outlier? Well, I think we're all going to agree here that 18 hours is my outlier. Now here's the question: Should it be included or not? Well this is where we get into that kind of a, a gray zone I know that 18 hours is significantly different than 8 than 4.6 2.1 or 0.4 the question is you're studying for a test is it uncharacteristic yes is it extreme yes is it possible yes but you remember we're talking about a test here we're talking about whether or not when you study could you study for 18 hours well if this was a unit final fine possibly not but what what if, what if this was a final exam all right could you study for 18 hours for a final exam and the answer to that is most definitely yes you could all right maybe these are the days that you're leading up to the test Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and this is the Sunday before the test right and you know Monday morning you're going to write in, you walk in and you write that test and you cram like crazy on, on Sunday. Is it possible? Yes, it is. So in this type of a situation, should it be excluded? Well, in this situation, I don't know, all right? I think that there's two answers for this. You could say, no, I'll keep it. It's possible. But when you look at the numbers, is it significantly different? I would look at this, and my first indication would be looking at these numbers that they forgot the decimal, which should have been a 1.8. Okay, so if you had a reason for it and you wrote it down to keep the 18, you would be correct. But it has to be a plausible reason. If you said no, to turf it, get rid of it, exclude it. Um, tell me why. Tell me, you think they forgot the decimal? That makes sense to me. I'm gonna be looking at that, going, "Yeah, 
I agree. 1.8 makes more sense looking at the numbers. If you said, no, keep it, they could have been cramming like crazy on the last day for a test. And I'd say, yeah, that's possible. Now, what if they said 28? But this wasn't 18, but it was 28. Now, if you tell me to keep it, I'm going to tell you no. I mean, 18 hours, that's studying from 8 o'clock at night till about you know, midnight the next that night. That's the extreme of studying. But you know, I know people who are studying for the diploma exams in high school that will do stuff like that. But 28 hours? No, nah, I don't think so. That's like nonstop, 24 hours around a clock and an extra four hours. So if it's something like that, no, it's not going to happen. Okay? But again, it's the reason behind whether you include it or exclude it that's important. Okay, so try the questions on page 269, and uh, we'll see you next lesson.